Good evening. Thanks for inviting us. I'm Suzanne Dubois, and I was the project administrator for the Hammer in Hand Bullet Center Tenant Improvement Project, which means that not only did I work for the general contractor, I'm also the end user and the occupant of the space now that it is complete. Many thanks to Jesse Bacon, site superintendent, who put in many long hours, oftentimes overnight to avoid disturbing the other tenants. And thanks to Daniel Thomas, principal and founder of Hammer in Hand, project manager for the build, and driving force behind the TI. Let me tell you, it is not easy being the general contractor and the client at the same time. <laughs> Hammer in Hand is a general contracting firm formed 20 years ago, and as you can tell from our um, presentations earlier tonight, we work exclusively with outside architects and designers on residential and commercial projects, which means that we don't do design build, but instead work in partnership. So thanks to Miller Hull, the Bullet Center architects, who we worked with on space layout and sound attenuation, and thanks to NB Design, who we worked with for interior design and material selection. We decided to locate our office in the Bullet Center, as its mission is in alignment with ours. The Bullet Center, if you are not aware, makes the claim of being the greenest commercial building in the world without blushing. As a company of craft builders, the best form of sustainability is for our creations to last. The Bullet Center's proposed lifespan of 250 plus years ensures that our legacy will live on. The Bullet and its creation under the Living Building Challenge was also attractive to Hammer in Hand because it delivers more durable buildings that are energy efficient. Hammer and Hand's focus is on Passive House, and that means that we enter the green conversation through building envelope construction and energy efficiency as a climate solution. The Living Building Challenge allowed us to explore, through our own design, the other petals of the living building. To begin with, there were challenges working in the building and in the particular space that we leased. The particular nature of doing a TI in a living building means avoiding a red list, as mentioned, of chemicals deemed by a number of international agencies as being harmful to living things. And the space, as you can see, is a ground floor space sandwiched between two smooth concrete plates with glass and concrete walls. The echo chamber produced by these planes is the first significant design challenge. Telling the story of Hammer in Hand is the second design challenge and furthering the story of the Bullet Center's sustainability in conforming to the guidelines of a living building is the third challenge for the slides. First, the ceiling. We attack that with the use of these fuzzy panels. The color and the fastening, no glues in order to avoid any potential redless materials, was meant to reflect the image of the concrete itself. The panels are echo eliminator by Acoustical Surfaces Incorporated, and they're made of 80% post-industrial recycled content. The mechanical systems of the bullet also serve to tell its story, including reclaimed roof water and gray water systems. So exposing the mechanical systems was preferred to hiding it behind a solid drop ceiling. You can see a gray water reclamation pipe here. At the foyer, you see another element. We created a grid of steel locally produced, of course, that holds loose slats of reclaimed fur. These are pieces of fur flooring that would have otherwise ended up in a scrap truck as they're smaller damaged end cuts. Instead, they become a movable and changeable texture that further attenuates the echo chamber. It also adds wood, the treasured trope of our trade, and it starts to reflect our craft. In this slide, you can see how when we bring the fuzzy panels down the wall with the fastening system, it really mimics and blends with the concrete wall next to it. This slide is taken from the interior of our conference room, looking out into the main workspace. Note the use of glass to allow natural light into all areas of the office, another requirement of the living building. The fuzzy quilted ceiling can be seen in the main office area, and the first slat system can be seen in the conference room. Here we can see two other solutions to our craft and story challenge. The use of the reclaimed fur bleacher stock to contain the glazing that forms the interior demising walls here. Demising walls. Here it forms the glazing wall for the conference room, the conference room table, and the surfaces of the desks. The wood is all reclaimed from sports auditoriums of high universities and high schools here in the Northwest, and they come with the distinctive markings of the carriage bolt patterns. The surfaces of the desk are gray stained sugar pine, and the glazed partitions are Douglas fir. 
The desks and the conference table were created by craftspeople in our own hammer in hand wood shop. In this slide, you can also see the large slatted conference room door. It's in its open position here, resting against the glass panel next to it. The concept is MB Designs. So the green material is three-form chroma. This is a domestically produced acrylic made in Salt Lake City of 38% recycled content. Three-form specifications require that no metal fastener come into contact with the material, so one of the design challenges was how to conjoin the material with the reclaimed bleacher stock. After an iterative process, long story short, we used a brass threaded insert into the wood and a stainless fastener with a protective collar that keeps the fastener from encountering the three-form. Here, a few of our carpenters are installing the door. The door weighs several hundred pounds and presented several engineering challenges, but it also gave us the opportunity to explore new material. You can see the 66 fasteners used to join the first slats to the three-form chroma. Here you see the door closed, and you can see the tannin-stained carriage bolt holes from the slats from their original use of the bleacher structure. Also because of the fastener solution, all of the fastening is hidden on this side, leaving the simplicity of the wood slats and the green flow of the three form. This is another repeat of the ceiling pattern. It serves to add warmth, more textured surfaces, and attenuated sound. Another of the requirements for the desk design, besides showcasing craft and utilizing sustainable material, was having desks with adjustable height. Standing desks were a serious desire for some of our office staff, while others felt it to be a form of torture. <laughs> my colleague Zach, who presented earlier tonight as a stander, but as you can see from looking at my back there, I am not. Although I would have taken an energy generating bicycle to charge my cell phone or possibly power a space heater on a chilly day. We also wanted the desk surface, the bleacher stack, to float over an industrial framework that denotes our heavy construction skills. In this shot, you get a sense of that floating feeling with the desk in the foreground. And here are the guts, the underside of the desks. It's a big steel I-beam with a couple of attenuated teeth tracks for height adjustments. Clearly, the inspiration for our design was drawn from the desks of the Klingon War Council. <laughs> But they easily remove and make our dust panels adjustable. It's a low material use, high functioning system that conveys our story. We built under the guise of the living building challenge, but we saw it as the living building opportunity. How could we use the design parameters set in place by the Bullet Center to showcase Hammer and Hand's commitment to craftsmanship? We've given new life to 100 year old wood that was destined for a scrap pile and created a beautiful space that will last for hundreds of years. The design guidelines helped bring Hammer and Hands craftsmanship forward, and I'd like to think that even without the red list in place, there isn't a design element that we would change in the space. The Bullet Center is a fantastic place to work, and Hammer and Hand is proud to be a part of the community in the building. So thanks for having us here tonight.